And finally, the Iowa Hawkeyes. And we've, we've heard this one a few times. Could this be the year? Will this be the year that Iowa finishes in the top 50 in total offense for the first time since 2006 in a full season? No. Top 50. That's <laughs> No. It's just a huge jump. It's not that I don't have confidence in this offense to take a jump with personnel, but that is just a massive, colossal jump when you look at the numbers. Of course, the last Big Ten championship was in 2004. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, uh, which is more likely? They finish top 50 in offense or they win a Big Ten championship? That's a tough question. <laughs> that is a tough question. Which is more likely that Iowa finishes with a top 50 offense or they win the Big Ten title? They win the Big Ten title. I think I agree. I, I think I agree. I, I think because I think they can win the Big Ten title with a top 70, top 80 offense yeah. if the defense is elite. I think they could go to that. You know, they play. Here's the deal. I know there's going to be some Michigan fans that rip me because we have that love hate relationship. But you do remember last year, the game against Michigan, as bad as Iowa's offense was, and it was horrendous. Weren't they within seven, like late in the fourth quarter? If I remember this correctly, Iowa fans, correct me. Otherwise, they had that fourth down play at the goal line. And I believe it was 20 to seven. And they would have gone to 20 to 14 okay. with a chance to make a stop, get the ball back to win the game. <laughs> I know I'm <laughs> okay. Just thank you for the clarification, but that's what I remember. That game got to like 20 to nothing early third quarter. I don't remember who else was playing because that was my that was my game for noon. That was my number one game. Got to 20 to nothing. With Iowa's offense, especially, I was gone. I was out. I was on to other stuff. And then I flipped back, and I saw those couple plays leading to that goal line play, and I'm like, oh, they're going to cut it to 20 to 14. They got a chance. You're right. They were goal-lined. I remember. I mean, I just <laughs> – <laughs> they had had two nice drives down the field. They had gotten on the field two nice drives. And, yeah, you, you score there in one play, and, you know, it's 20 to 14. You got shot. But, of course, they did not. And uh... <laughs> then they gave up a meaningless touchdown, but then they also scored a meaningless touchdown. So what was it, 27-14 to 14 final? Yeah. Oh. And then finally for the Hawkeyes here, uh, do you know when the last time that Iowa won an outright Big Ten championship? This has been a while. Yes. Wow. Working on 40 years. Um, well, the good news they, is there aren't no shared a titles few. anymore. Hmm? They've had quite a few shared since then. Yeah, and they were very close. Obviously, very close in 2009. Um, you know, they were overtime against Ohio State. You know, they win that. Uh, would have been an outright. Am I correct? Or no? 2009. Ohio State. Where did Ohio State finish conference-wise? Seven and one. Yeah, so Iowa would have, yeah. Iowa would have had that outright. Oh, because they went six and two. Who? Oh, Iowa. Yeah, yeah. Their only losses that year were Northwestern and Ohio State. Yeah. So they would have won it outright had they won, that. and they would go beat Minnesota the next week, which they did. But they would have done that, and they were, yeah. <laughs> they were one. I don't even know what you're going to call that one. Both uh, of those seasons, oh nine and ten, or am I getting them oh eight and nine? Well, no, they weren't really close. They weren't Nine really that ten. close. Well, 08, they won four games by a total of, excuse me, 08, they lost four games by a total of 12 points. But they finished 8-4 and four and then beat South Carolina in the Outback Bowl. 2009 was the, or 2010 was the year of all the hype. And, of course, that was the year they lost to Wisconsin. Things kind of derailed. Yeah. Well, maybe I get those mixed. I don't get them mixed up. But maybe I tack on the extra year of it being for the Big Ten Championship because, both of those wins enabled Ohio State to win the Big Ten Championship. One shared with Penn State, the other outright. And I'll yeah. say this. If there's some of the bigger what-ifs, and, and we, we could do this for a show sometime. Yeah. I know we're in fall yeah. camp, so maybe it's not a good time of the year. But like Next some night. of the some of the big yeah, some of the big what ifs for Iowa. What if um uh, Melvin Spears goes higher? You don't even know who Melvin Spears is. I know that what name. If, what if Melvin? He's the he's. If you go back and watch the, uh, 
who's the kid that scored the touchdown for Michigan State in 2015? L.J. Scott. Oh, if you yeah, watch that yeah. L.J. Scott run, Melvin Spears, who's a backup linebacker, comes in, goes low. L.J. Scott's got the ball up like this. He mm. stretches it over the goal line. If Spears goes high, that ball's coming out. I mean, f- frankly, he probably could have just ripped it away from him. Instead, he went low. L.J. Scott reaches over to the goal line. Michigan State wins. What if Melvin Spears had went high? What if in 2000, what, what if Sean Green had had his breakout year in 2009 instead of 2008? Because that was such a better team in 09. I mean, it was a good team in 08. And they lost, like I say, they lost four games by a total of 12 points. But imagine with the rushing attack that struggled in 2009. A couple of young guys, Brandon Wager, Adam Robinson, young freshman, but imagine had they had Sean or if Sean Green had just stuck around for an extra year coming off a Doak Walker award win title. Um, maybe they beat Ohio state. Maybe they honestly, you could make the argument Mark with a better run game. And I have to go back at that Northwestern game, but you remember when, when uh, Stanzi got rolled up on in the end zone, they were, I think up 10, nothing on Northwestern or seven, mm-hmm. nothing. They were up. Had they had a dominant run game, they probably would have won that game regardless of who was at quarterback. We may have been talking about a, a 12 and 0 season, or at least they would have had a shared title, right? They would have had a shared title with Ohio State. They could have lost the next week and still had a share of the title. Yes. So, I mean, just a lot of what ifs there in those two years, 15, 19, or it's just yeah. nine in 2015. That Ohio State team won the Rose Bowl over Oregon. That was a, I mean, here's the deal. Regardless of what people want to say about 2015, right? Week schedule. You know, they played Michigan State real tough, great game, and then Michigan State got trounced by Alabama. But what you just said is a valid point. There have been years where Iowa has been close to being elite. And in 2009, I think that's the best team of the century. I mean, this is the best team of the century. I mean, tell me, give me a better Iowa team during the 21st century. 2004, 2000, I mean, people bring up 2002, 2004, and maybe it's a recency bias, but with the way Iowa played Ohio State without Ricky Stanzi in the in the shoe that week, yeah, and then they beat a, a BCS. You know, they won an Orange Bowl, beat beat Georgia Tech. And I have to admit, and again, I'm going to throw 2008 into it because from the Ohio State side, that was a huge game because they needed that to share the Big Ten championship. And Terrell Pryor had to. I get the two games mixed up. Yeah, the the game in Iowa City, he had to pull off like a fourth and eighteen to to win the game. Yeah, to, to I extend that. the drive that I didn't give any thought to Ohio State losing those. Like I didn't turn that game on either one of those years, thinking Ohio State might lose this game. Like it was a a bit of a shock to me that they were playing close games in two thousand nine. Yeah. Why were you shocked by that when Iowa had one loss on the year? You you have to just understand the mentality. It's just well, Iowa was without Ricky Stanzi, and and I think most people thought without Stanzi they didn't stand a chance, especially with how poorly Vandenberg played the, the week before against Northwestern. But had Stanzi played in that game, I mean, Vandenberg played great. Can't, let's just acknowledge that he played great in that game. He was phenomenal. And there were passes dropped, but he was on the money. That, that's one of the greatest. That game, here we go with hyperbole. That Iowa-Ohio State game is one of the greatest single-game performances by an Iowa quarterback during the Kirk Ferentz era. And I know you go back to 2002, you go to the Brad Banks year. He had some great performances. Uh, Nate Stanley had 2017 against Iowa State where he threw five touchdowns. That would have to be in the conversation uh, C.J. Beathard, 2015 against Iowa State, um, played a pretty darn good game in Jack Trice. But man, that that play, that performance by Vandenberg, given the circumstances, his first career start with a Big Ten title on the line. Go, I mean, man, that 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 was. We ought to have. Here's what we ought to do, Mark. We ought to have a watch party on this channel where we watch that game together, right here with everybody. 2009 Iowa Ohio State. Yeah, could this be, be the first? Could this be the first? Well, we'll do the. Could this be the year? Could this be the year where I don't Iowa think plays? We can though, unfortunately. Say it again. I don't believe that we can, unfortunately. 
you can't just with legalities. Yeah. Would this is this the year where Iowa plays Ohio State for a Big Ten title for the first time since two thousand nine? Fair, fair question. Very fair question. That could very well happen. This may be the first year since 2009 where I was playing Ohio State with a conference championship on the line. Real quickly, will that yeah. happen? Will that happen? Uh, I would give both teams, especially Ohio State, a second place standing in their division Okay, right now. You're 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 actually tipping your cap to Wisconsin. So the yeah. the talking heads have gotten to you, Mark. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay. Maybe they they and I can't let that happen because you know what comes to mind. About three years ago, Nebraska was the media pick to win the West, and I actually bit on that. And the the entire summer, I was thinking nothing but. Iowa, Wisconsin, Iowa, Wisconsin. What's my decision going to be? And they they got to me. <laughs> I admit it. That's awful for me to admit too. There are too many question marks in, in, in at Wisconsin right now. I believe that. I believe that. I'm not saying that they can't win the title. I won't be shocked if they do. But for me to put my eggs in the Wisconsin basket preseason, there's just too many question marks with quarterback, with, with the coaching staff, with personnel, with scheme, too many question marks to You're, overcome. You are really bullish on Iowa. I'm not bullish on Iowa. I'm just bringing up Wisconsin. These people Nothing who are bullish. You shouldn't be. Well, there are people who are bringing up Wisconsin as the clear. I just don't understand. Um, is Wisconsin's personnel that much better than Iowa's? Like, I haven't studied Wisconsin's roster up and down. No. But... Uh, they brought in some people from the transfer portal, but that's not always plug and play. And schematically, we understand the story. You you mentioned, I think a couple weeks ago, there's the argument that could be made that they're trying to uh, to fit a, a square peg in a round hole. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I, I just think the, and I see our, our um, Wisconsin fan in the chat, so I appreciate that. They may win the West. I, I just think to bank on them when I think I was the safest pick. Yeah. Oh, I think Michigan's the safer pick than Ohio State in the other division. It's good. But I think Ohio schedule. State's more talented. Ohio State's got a tough schedule. Yeah. Now, Wisconsin has a pretty favorable schedule as well. So does Illinois. And Illinois is the dark horse in this division right now, yeah. I think. It's not Minnesota. It's not Purdue. It's not Nebraska. I think it's Illinois. But I would still, based on returning production and just all circumstances considered, I'd, I'd lean toward Iowa. Heavily lean toward Iowa. I've grown a little weary of hearing this comment. <laughs> I know we, we keep, we keep revisiting that. Don't we? <laughs> it just keeps getting brought up over and over again. All right. Yes. Wisconsin's running backs are always, or their wide receivers. Oh, their wide receivers are going to be good. Okay. So who are their wide receivers? I got a kid from, Let's see. They got a kid we're, from we're delve in on this here. They got a couple transfers at wide receiver, right? Yeah, they had a couple they guys did. leave. Shoot. They had more transfers than anyone in the big 10. They had the portal. Danny Davis is not, he's not there, right? <laughs> he's, he's, he's done there forever. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to, I'm going to cheat on this one. Their wide receiver play. Oh, Chamir DK. He's their number one wide receiver. 47 okay. catches, six touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, Skyler Bell coming back, 30 catches, five touchdowns. C.J. Williams is the one that that I kind of forgot about. Oh, was... yeah, the transfer coming in from USC. Yeah. yeah. Keontes Lewis, 20 catches last year. Yeah, C.J. Williams, Bryson Green, he's another transfer coming in. Okay. C.J. Williams caught like five passes last year. Caleb Brown got like five passes last year. One, excuse me. <laughs> One pass. 
So do you think there's, Mark, do you think there's any reason for people to be reading into a, a clip on social media of camp today in Iowa City of Caleb Brown running with Deacon Hill in the threes? No. Pictures are nothing but a way to just kind of draw a little bit of interest. Well, it wasn't a picture. It was a clip. Oh, it was a clip. Yeah. Okay. I thought you said it was a picture. No, it was a clip. Well, regardless. They didn't run a play. They just kind of set they up run a play. formation. That's a good, good question. Um, let's see if they ran a play. Let me go back over to. No, they didn't run a play. It just shows them lining up. Let's see. Uh, our guy here, Smiles Per Gallon, is saying, check out Matt Rule's record versus top 25 teams. Well, I got to think at Baylor, he had an 11 and 3 year, and he had a 7 and 6 year. I don't know. That. Um, that that uh, last Baylor team that got Matt Rule his NFL job was pretty good. They were pretty good. They beat a lot of winning record teams. I'm looking at. By the way, Mark, before before we wind this show down, just want to yep. let everybody know if you didn't realize this, we've got Iowa Media Day Friday, and we've got the open scrimmage Saturday. So this is going to be a busy busy week. So I haven't put out any content here the last day or so. Did post the the uh, Cooper DeGene uh, podcast for everybody. If you haven't listened to that, definitely do that on YouTube. It'll be on Spotify here 